Hi everyone, I promised that I was going to do a mini tutorial on binding. So uh, here is my mini tutorial. Um, it's not all inclusive, so I'm sure you'll be able to find other information about binding out there, but I wanted to talk to you about the binding that I use. Uh, I use two types of binding. The first type is a single fold binding, which is just, as it says, it's just strips joined together and you join as many as you need to make however long of a strip you need. And then when you attach it to your quilt top, and I'm going to use a quilt top that's not sandwiched yet, but I will show you kind of what I mean here. When you attach it to the quilt top, you're just gonna lay it down on the edge of your sandwich like this as a single strip, pin it in place, and then you're gonna stitch it down. And then once it's stitched down um, all the way around the quilt, you're gonna fold it over to the back and stitch it in place. Now that is single fold binding, and I like to use that on uh, wall hangings or um, even table runners that I know aren't going to be um, uh, washed or being overused. Um, that way, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a nice binding, but it doesn't have to be really, really durable. Now, the second kind of binding that I use often, and this is the one I'm going to be demonstrating on when I, when I put it on a quilt later in this video, is called double fold binding. And the reason it's called double fold binding is because you cut wider strips than you would cut for your um, single fold binding. And it can go anywhere from two and two and a quarter to two and a half inches. I like two and a quarter because I like to have my binding tight. And then you, after you join all the strips together, just like you did with the single fold binding, you take it to your ironing board and you press it in half lengthwise, all the way down the length of the binding. So basically it's, it's a double thickness of fabric. And then once again, when you were ready to attach it to your quilt, you would attach it like this on your quilt sandwich, pin it down, stitch it, and then you once again flip it over to the back and stitch it. So those are the two types I use. I cut my strips from straight on the, on the uh, width of fabric. You can, however, cut it on the bias if that's the kind of... Um, strips that you want to use and uh, put them together to make a binding. Um, I mostly use uh, bias strips if I am binding something that has scalloped edges or something that is uh, perhaps a round quilt. But when I just have a quilt that's square or rectangle, I use uh, strips cut from the width of the fabric, just straight strips. So now we are going to move over to the sewing machine so I can show you how I join the binding strips together. Hi, so now we're at the machine and I'm going to show you how uh, you join strips together to make your binding. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay your first strip right side up like this, and then you're gonna take your next strip and you're gonna lay it wrong side up over your first strip. And as you can see, I'm trying to avoid the salvage on both strips because I don't want that to show up. Uh, once I do the seam, I don't want it to show up on the front of the binding. So now what I do is I go ahead and I stitch the strip. I do a back stitch there. And then you go ahead and you stitch on the diagonal. I have a um, piece of tape here that gives me the idea where to place my, um, where my strips uh, sit together. You could also choose to draw a line so that it's easier for you to um, sew that seam. Then what I do, instead of taking it out of the machine to sew the next strip onto the other end, I'll take the strip that is the one that is uh, wrong side up. And then I flip it over like this and I lay that end there. And then I get another strip. And 
and I lay that one wrong side up, just like I did the, the first part. And then I go through and stitch. And this way, you can basically chain stitch however many uh, strips you need to make your binding. So I'm going to finish up making this binding. Um, this, of course, is thicker, so it's going to be a double fold binding. So then I will go to the ironing board and show you how I turn it into a double fold. Um, if this was just a single fold binding, it would be thinner. And then I, will, all I, I wouldn't have to do anything else um, to get ready to put it on the quilt other than pressing the seams where the strips meet. So we'll meet up now at the ironing board. Okay, so now we're at the ironing board and I'll show you how I start out um, getting my uh, double fold binding ready. First off, I take a pair of scissors and I cut basically a 45 degree cut at the end of the double fold or the strip. And then I take my iron, I, I just kind of eyeball uh, about a quarter of an inch um, pressing right here. I'll get it a little closer. I just finger press it with my fingers and then I take my iron and press down on that. And that just kind of makes the, uh, the end where it's not going to be raw um, where I attach it to my quilt. So now the next thing I have to do is I have to cut off this excess fabric in the seam allowance. And then I kind of cut off the tails there. So I do that all the way down the strip. And when I do that, and I'll do it as I go here while I'm doing this one, I go ahead and I iron my seam, press my seam. So now we can start doing the folding over. So what I do is I fold over, and as I iron, I press it into a fold. And you keep going down your whole length of the double fold binding. And as you can see, I'll show you when I, I got to that seam and you can see the you can see the seam on both sides. But it's nice and smooth because you cut off that excess fabric. So then you continue down your strip. Keep going until I get to that next seam. So here we come up to the next place where it's seamed together. So once again, I'm going to cut the excess fabric, lay it down, Press open that seam. You can press your seams to the side if you like to do that, but I just, I always press open. It just creates, for me, it creates less bulk. And then I continue on. And we do this for the whole length of the strip. So now we're going to go back to the sewing machine and start attaching it to the quilt. Whoops, I said we were going to the sewing machine, but actually uh, I forgot I wanted to show you how I pin the um, the uh, binding and uh, how I actually control the binding a little bit. You got this mess of binding here. Now you don't want to be dragging this between the sewing machine and where you're pinning it onto your quilt. So what I do is I wind it up like this and I keep winding it until I get a usable width that I need to start pinning it to my quilt. So um, that way, when you're sitting and stitching, um, you can have this secured. I either use a, uh, one of those large binder clips or I use a rubber band 
or you could even stick a large pin down the center. You just gotta be careful you don't stick yourself with that pin. But that's how I, I uh, control this tangle of binding when I am going back and forth between uh, the sewing machine and where I'm pinning the quilt. So, but for now, now that we got that out of the way, I'll show you um, how I pin along the edge. Um, as I said in my blog, I leave a little bit of the binding, I mean the, the uh, uh, batting and backing sticking out over the edge of the quilt because when you uh, do that, you can get more of a full stuffed binding. Now this is optional, you don't have to do that, but I just do it because uh, it makes my binding look a little more full and stiff. So to start, what you do is you take the end of the binding where you uh, made this diagonal cut and then folded it over and notice how it kind of makes this little pocket there. Um, once you sew it down, there'll be like a little pocket and you'll see when we join the binding together at the end why I have made that little pocket. So I'm going to lay that down and then I just start pinning. And you're gonna pin all the way down until you get, I'm gonna pretend I got all the way to the end, until you get to the end of the quilt top because you uh, only pin to a corner and then you sew, you only sew one side or one corner at a time. So here I am at the end. Let's pretend that I already pinned all the way down and when you're at the end, you're going to want to measure uh, one quarter of an inch up from the bottom of your quilt top. And then that's where you're going to place your pin because you're going to stop one quarter of an inch from the bottom of your quilt top because that is going to help make a, a nice mitered corner when you're flipping it to the back and stitching it in place. So we're gonna, I'm gonna work on pinning this and then we're gonna go to the sewing machine. Okay, so now we're back at, we're at the sewing machine and I wanted to show you, um, I'd already started sewing my binding on for this one uh, that I will show you how I began it. Um, this is the little uh, pocket you kind of made um, by folding it over and having the raw edge folded over. You need this and you will see when I uh, meet the binding uh, coming from the other side, you need this little pocket to slip in the edge of the binding when you finish and then that way you have a finished edge. Now, as you can see where I started stitching is about a half an inch below uh, where that little pocket starts because then that'll leave um, the give that I need to slide the end of the binding in there and then finally stitch and meet that stitch to go ahead and uh, close up the binding. So uh, once I get to the end of this corner of this quilt, then I will show you how um, I flip it and uh, we continue sewing on the next side. Okay, now we're coming to uh, where the end of the quilt on this side and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to stitch down to this pin which is a quarter inch up from the bottom of the quilt. I'm gonna get right up to that pin without running it over. Remove the pin and then I'm going to do a back stitch to make it secure. I'm going to go ahead and lift up my foot, snip my threads, and then this is how you turn the corner. You've got your binding right here. You bend it back and make this little angle, kind of like a 90 degree angle, as you can see. And then you bend it back again. So the little angle is underneath the fold there And then I'll pin this in place. And then you continue pinning along this new side of the quilt, 
matching up the raw edge of the binding with the raw edge of the quilt. I'm just gonna sew this little corner just to show you how I start sewing it. So then you flip it over like this. And this one, you, you start uh, back right at the edge of the binding. You don't start a quarter inch in where that uh, this seam is. So then I will start stitching. I'm gonna do a back stitch. And then I stitch. Now I'm gonna take this out just so I can show you what it looks like. So this is what your corner is gonna look like. And then when you're ready to flip it to the back, to stitch it and you get your both sides stitched down, you come the one way and then the other way, you're gonna end up with your mitered corner. And it's a little bit difficult to see, but you can kind of see how it makes the, there's the, the 45 degree angle there to make your mitered corner. So once I get to the end of this quilt, then I'm gonna show you how I, I uh, finish it off. Okay, here we are coming up to the end. As you can see, there's my beginning with the little pocket and here's the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna see um, basically um, about, uh, you know, I, I don't want a huge tail here because I don't want a lot of bulk. So I'm gonna cut this at about a quarter inch uh, longer than where this pocket is beginning. So I'm eyeballing it. You can get out a ruler and measure it if you need to. And I just kind of go like this, cut that off. I take this end and I tuck it in. And once I have it nice and tucked in there, then I'm going to pin it. Actually, get it a little tighter in there. So now I have it all pinned, and since it's only about a quarter of an inch in here, it's not going to be really bulky. Um, it's not going to create a huge amount of bulk. Now there's other ways to end your binding. I know uh, there is a way to um, do a mitered corner and get it to perfectly fit. That's just not the way I do it. Um, uh, there are videos out there of people who do it that way. but. Uh, this is the way I do it. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch. I'm going to pull these pins out so I don't run over them. And then as I meet my beginning stitch where I started stitching, right there, I'm just going to do a double stitch and end. And so now my binding is all one. And as I flip it over, when I get to this side when I'm stitching and I flip it over, you can go ahead and do some blind stitches where those two uh, uh, pieces of binding meet up so that it looks like an actual seam from where you seamed the other pieces together. So that is how you attach double fold binding to a quilt top.